All right, friends, it's time for my final top five. This is my favorite design. Uh, what I mean by that are, these are the cards that I'm most happy to see being printed. I think they're going to promote some very healthy play patterns. They're going to take the game in a direction that I'm really happy with and lead to some more healthy and interesting and fun ladder environments uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so these are the cards that I'm kind of giving kudos to Blizzard for printing because I think this is these are the cards that uh, I'm happy to see being put into Hearthstone for a variety of reasons that I will be getting into shortly. Number five is Call to Arms. Uh, this is a card that just missed out on my top five best cards list. I think it's very powerful. Uh, but uh, besides that, I think this is going to promote some really interesting deck building decisions. Uh, if you play this and you get uh, three one drops, I think it'll be kind of underwhelming. So I think what this is going to do is promote maybe uh, more aggressive paladin decks to play a little more two drop heavy, which moves them away from Prince Keliseth, of course. Um, so this obviously just seems like a ton of value if you're able to get three two drops off of this then you're getting six mana worth of cards for four you're getting three cards off of one card that seems pretty sick uh, but more than that i think this is also maybe a potential player in like control decks uh, if you're grabbing a Doomsayer and a couple of Taunt Minions, like Dirty Rat or something off of this, now you're talking, you're looking at a Board Wipe and a Cane here on turn four. So uh, I think this is going to promote a lot of really interesting deck building, and uh, I'm really happy to see Blizzard putting cards in the game that uh, force players to think about the ways in which they build their decks. At number four, we have Grumble. Uh, this is a card that I'll admit I'm very biased towards. I love Elemental Shaman as a deck. The reason I really put this on my favorite designs, though, is because I think this is going to really reward players for playing well. Uh, it's going to be uh, not as trivial as people think to set up strong grumble turns, because uh, what you want to be doing is getting value off of the trigger, obviously, and bouncing a lot of minions to your hand, but you're going to have to balance that with the fact that if you play grumble, and your board's clear, your opponent's going to have a turn to be able to just smack you in the face. So I think it's going to be harder to set up efficient grumble turns than people expect. You're not going to always be able to plop this down because it might lead to a few disasters. So uh, I, I'm really excited to get my hands in this card and actually see in practice uh, when are going to be the best times to play him. And uh, how am I going to be able to set up several turns in advance, a strong grumble turn, for me to hopefully then be able to uh, take over the game with all of my discounted minions and awesome elemental battle cry triggers. At number three, we get Hooked Reaver. Uh, this is a card, uh, again, just missed out on my top five best cards list, and I kind of wanted to sneak it in here. Uh, but I really, really, really enjoy this uh, dichotomy of punishing yourself and taking damage to get rewarded. Uh, it's a really fine line that you kind of have to balance, and I've seen it in a few other card games play out to uh, pretty tremendous success. Uh, this card is not always going to be a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. I think it's going to be quite hard for uh, people to play this on turn 4 at 15 life unless they're facing down some kind of aggressive deck. Uh, so what I expect to see this in is either that self-damage deck, if that does become a thing, or in more controlling decks that can afford to wait and wait and wait and then just slap this down as a tempo play, uh, maybe follow it up with something that copies its stats. So uh, this seems like a great card for hand lock. And I'm really happy to see a card which is going to force players to think about how much damage they want to take before they play this, uh, how much time they want to wait to see if they can even make this be a 7-7 in the first place or just play it as a 4-4. It's going to lead to a lot of really cool decisions, a lot of very impactful decisions that uh, I'm excited to see on the ladder. At number two, we get Reckless Flurry. Uh, this is another card very similar to Hook Reaver, which is going to force players to think about the ways in which they uh, craft their life total. They craft the amount of armor they have. Uh, this is not going to be a trivial card to play. Uh, I think a lot of the times uh, people are going to have to try to set this up a few turns in advance. Because if you're facing down a really aggressive deck, the, you know, the kind of deck where you'd really like to play Reckless Flurry against, uh, you're unlikely to be able to keep your armor total quite high. Uh, so what I think this is going to lead to is a lot of interesting multi-turn decisions where you try to set up a taunt minion into a high amount of armor and clear the board with other spells so that you'll be able to get that devastating Reckless Flurry turn. So uh, much like uh, much like Hooked Reaver and uh, Grumble, I think this is a card that you're going to have to set up a few turns in advance to get maximum value for and uh, really is going to reward smart play. So I'm happy to see this on the ladder, and I'm also very optimistic that this card will be able to revive uh, kind of dead archetype at the end of KFT, which is 
uh, the Control Warrior archetype. I love Control Warrior decks, and I really hope that Reckless Flurry will be able to revive them. My number one best design card from the set is Unstable Evolution. Uh, this card just has so many decisions baked into it. I've talked about this at length on Icy Veins, uh, but I'm so excited to get my hands on this because at every single turn, you're going to have a decision to make. Is it worth evolving this minion into something uh, potentially uh, better or potentially worse? There's a lot of times that you evolve something and it gets worse. Or should I move over to this minion over here and try to evolve that? You know, should I play my minions first and uh, try to evolve some of those? Or should I wait and evolve and see if, I get ha see if I'm happy with the evolves that I have and the minions I currently have? Uh, it's it's going to be so hard to play this card perfectly. And I think it's really going to reward players who play smart. Uh, it's going to be really deadly in the right hands, and I'm so happy to see cards that are printed like that. Cards that reward players for playing tight, for playing smart, and maybe punish players for playing a little loose. Uh, that's what's going to really uh, drive this game uh, to be, uh, you know, have a high skill cap, to be super skill oriented, which is what I think a lot of players want. And despite the fact that there's a random nature to this card, uh, I think this is definitely a direction that I would like to see Hearthstone continue to go in. Cards that have tons of decisions baked into them that really reward smart players for playing well. So that's it. That's the end of my five top five lists. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of new way to do set reviews, if you want to call it that. Uh, I hope you found it to be fun uh, and maybe a little bit informational as well. Uh, of course, if you're interested in checking out my full set reviews, a review of every single card in the set, just hop on over to icyveins.com, go over to the Hearthstone section, and you'll be able to find my reviews for every single card in the set over there. See you guys next time.